So this is the example um, for 7.3. I'm going to go ahead and do number six. And so from the textbook itself, um, if we go back here to the textbook, I believe number number six says in x size 5 to 12, approximate the area under the graph of f of x. Use the x-axis the following methods when the n is equal to 4. So the first thing, we're going to use the left endpoints. We're going to use the right endpoints for part B. Part C is when we average the, the values that we get from A and B. And then in part D, we're going to go ahead and use the midpoints. And so we are using number 6. F of x is equal to 3x plus 2 from x is equal to 1 to f is, uh, x is equal to 3. And so here's the information that we have. We have n is uh, going to be 4, so we're going to split it up into uh, four triangles. Our function is 3x plus 2. We're going to go from x1 to x is equal to 3. Now, the formula for the area for this particular one, actually for all of them, the only thing that changes would be how many n's are we using, is um, the area is equal to the summation uh, of f of x times um, delta x, or so the change in x from i is equal to 1 to i is equal to 4. So the first thing that we have to see is that the delta x, or the change in x, is b minus a over n. And so in this case, b is 3, a is 1, n is 4, and so we get a 0.5. So how do we get the endpoints, the left, the right, and how do we get the midpoints? So the first thing that I want to show you here, and this is just an illustration of what f of x, any f of x, can look like. Um, in this example, we go from x is equal to 1 to x is equal to 3. And so since we're dividing the delta x is equal to 0.5, what we do is we're going to take each one of these and we're going to just divide it in half. I'm going to go a little bit longer because what I'm going to write there for a second is my 1.5 and my 2.5. And so when we're talking about the left endpoints, the, the first interval that we're doing uh, is, is 1, right? So x1, if I'm doing the left endpoints, then x1 has to be, uh, this would be my x1 if it's the left endpoint. So if you imagine that I have a triangle here, and then this is 1, and this is 1.5. And so the left endpoint, so this will be the left and this will be the right for that particular um, interval n, right? That's that's my i. Um, this is my x i, if you will, and in this case, um, i is equal to one, right? And so that's this this one right here. And so the left endpoint is one. The right endpoint is one point five. And so for a, we're going to use the left endpoint. For b, we're going to use the right endpoint, and that's where the one point five comes into play. And then you can also see for uh, for 2, right? If I was doing this for 2 also, right? Um, then this would be my 1.5 if I'm doing the left endpoint, right? And then the right endpoint here would be the 2. And you can see here from the left endpoint where it says the left endpoint is 1.1 and then the right endpoint is 2. Now, this middle piece right here is the midpoint. So when they ask for the midpoint, you simply just take, you know, you add them and you divide them by two. So for this particular one, you can see that if I was talking about two, it would be 1.75. And then this one here, my midpoint would be 1.25. So that's where the, the values come from, the left endpoint, the right endpoint, and then the midpoint to find uh, the area underneath the curve, above the x-axis of f of x is equal to 3x plus 2 from x is equal to 1, uh, from x1 to x3, okay? So left endpoint, right endpoint, all that good stuff. So this is very important because this allows you um, to know how you're going to divide each of the intervals, right? So remember, I have this uh, theoretical uh, area from underneath the curve, from x is equal to 1 to x is equal to 3. But I'm taking that area, and I'm going to divide it into four intervals, right? And so this is my 1, my 1, my 2, my 3, and my 4. Each interval is going to be a size of 0.5. And so that's how we go from 1 to 1.5, from 1.5 to 2, to, from 2 to 2.5, and then 2.5 to 3. And then, so how do I find this information? So 
once I, I find my left endpoints, which I got here, right? My left endpoints will be 1, 1 1.5, 2, and 2.5. And so what I do is I find f of x1. And so for each one of these, my f of x1, using my f of x, I get these, uh, these values. So then the area for this one then would be the summation from i is equal to 1 to 4, right, of f of x1 times the change in x. And so then this particular one is going to be 5 times 0 0.5 plus 6.5 times 0 0.5 plus 8 times 0 0.5 plus 9.5 times 0 0.5. And so when you see all that information, sorry, so when you see all that information, the next thing that you have to do is calculate the values for each one of these, right? So 5 times 0 0.5 will give you 2.5, and then 6.5 times 0 0.5 is 3.25, uh, and then 8, that's going to be 4. And then 9.5 times 0.5 is 4.75. And then you add all these together. So 2.5 plus 3.25 plus 4 plus 4.75 is equal to 14.5. So 14.5 using the left endpoints, the area underneath the curve above the x-axis, right? So this is my x and this is my y is 14.5 uh, units. And so let's do it now using the right endpoints. Again, if you think about um, the curve, right? And if I make this one, I'm gonna, uh, let me see, that's two, that's three. I'm gonna make this one three over here, and then this one two, right? Then if I use the right endpoints, remember what we said before that this run right here would be my 1.5 and this one be my 2.5, right? So using the right endpoint for the first interval, this one right here being my first interval, the right endpoint would be 1.5 and that's where we get this information right here, right? And so we're gonna go ahead and write out again the, uh, the area. So using the right endpoints, the area, the summation, right? We're gonna go ahead and do this of f of x1 delta x is going to be equal to 6.5 times 0.5 plus 8 times 0.5 plus 9.5 times 0.5 plus 11 times 0.5, right? And so what we have here now is that we know that 6.5 times 0.5 is 3.25. This is 4 plus 4.75. And then we have 11 times 0.5, which is 5.5. And so now we find the sum of these. So it's 3.25 plus 4 plus 4.75 plus 5.5. We get 17.5. Now, we're going to average A. In A, we got 14.5. In B, we got 17.5, and we're going to go ahead and average those. So if we do um, 17.5 plus 14.5, we get 32 divided by 2 is 16 units. So the average of using um, the left endpoints and the right endpoints of so 14.5, 17.5 respectively gets us an, an average of 16. Now here using the midpoints, I'm going to go ahead and draw this diagram again so you guys hopefully you can uh, visualize it at this point in time. So I'm going to use this as 1. This is three, this is my two. And so remember what we said before, right? We're, we're gonna split these up since we, we know that the change in X is, um, is going to be uh, three minus one over four, sorry, which is 0.5, right? And so in this case here, we got 1.5. In this case here, we got 2.5. So using the midpoints, if you think of this as being my first interval, right? I'm going to go ahead and just draw it out like this. This is my 1. This is my 1.5. So the midpoint between those two would be 1.25, right? 
And so that's the difference between using the left endpoint. So in this information, the left would be one. The right here, if I'm using, if I'm talking about the first, if I'm talking about this I, um, my right uh, in this case would be my 1.5, right? But then the midpoint, sorry, my midpoint will be 1.25, right? And that's where I get my XI being uh, my, my midpoint. And so you can see here clearly that the XI will change de depending on which one you're using, right? The nice thing is that the actual formula does not change. So the area is equal to the summation, right, of f of x1 times delta x. And in this case here, right, so we're going to have um, 5.75 times 0.5 plus 7, uh, what do we got? 7.25 times 0.5. 8.75 times 0.5 plus 10.25 times 0.5. So 5.75 times 0.5, it gives me 2.875. 7.25 times 0.5 gives me 3.625. 8.75 times 0.5 gives me 4.375. And then point. 10.25 times 0.5 gives me 5.125. And so now I'm going to add all those together. So I get 2.875 plus 3.625 plus 4.375 plus 5.125. And so then I get 16, which is equivalent to what I got when I averaged out using the left and the right endpoint. And so uh, just real quick, uh, if, we, if we think about the integral of, of this function, right? So we have 3x plus 2 dx from 1 to 3. And um, if when you find the integral of 3x plus 2, you know that that's going to be 3 times x squared over 2 plus 2x. And then what, what happens here is that we're going to actually find this from 3 to 1. And we can actually uh, find this information. We can actually find the actual area underneath the curve, right? And if, if this was my, my 3x plus 2 between 1, 1 and 3, we found that this area is actually equal to, to 16. And you can actually do this uh, this way by simply doing this, right? So you're going to have to do this. Let me erase this here. Right? And so I have this one. And this is going to be minus 3 one to the second power over 2 plus 2 times 1. And so um, in this case here, we have 3 to the second power, which is 9, right? And then 9 times 3 is going to be 27. So we have 27 over 2 plus 6 minus 3 over 2 plus 2, right? And so this is going to be 27 over 2 plus 12 over 2, right? It's equal to 6. And this is going to be 3 over 2 plus 4 over 2, right, which is equal to 2. And so if I do the 27 plus the 12, I get 39 over 2 minus 7 over 2. And then 39 minus 7 is 32 over 2, which will give me 16, which is what we got um, when we use the midpoints and we averaged out the left and the right. So you can clearly see here that using this formula is equivalent uh, to using, you know, averaging out the left and the right endpoint and then also using uh, the midpoint uh, to, to find the answer. And I will go ahead and expand on this in class uh, on Monday. Thank you.